All right, everybody, welcome back. It's Tuesday. It's UAP Tuesday. It's me and Riley, and I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's starting to slow down as far as people. I know that there's uh, any thread that you go to, you can still dive deep, and you can really go down the rabbit hole, and you can do all that stuff, and it, that's been going on for years. But this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. It's that there was this kind of fever pitch because of the hearings, and now it's because there's been so many blockages, and they're doing exactly what they've been doing in the past, and it seems to be the same old, same old, and it doesn't, the same people who are trying to make a, I mean, even, even Burchett seems to have slowed down a little bit. So, you know, Ross, Ross Callhart's out, out there talking a lot about the stuff, and I know that Chris Cuomo just had on, people tar, starts talking about it, but I don't know, guys. We're going to talk about that, but we're really going to dive into one of the incidents that happened that we've been talking about a lot in this show, and that's the O'Hare incident that happened in 96, I believe, right? 96 or 2006? Good start. 2006. 2006, that's what I meant. Um, anyway, so we'll talk about that, and we're also going to talk about the fact that, you know, Avi Loeb has been out there a lot, so he's, he's somebody who's, who's talking a lot about it still and should be, who's an astrophysicist, and, and he said that it should be the subject UFOs should be the subject of mainstream inquiry and that science must bring uh, clarity behind that. And I hope that people t take that and run with that. Because he, he, among a handful of other people, seem to be those people. But it's like, it is about as taboo as it's ever been. Just talking to people, friends in circles, and the same thing. It's <coughs> UFO, UFO. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to know they don't see anything. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. It's me and Riley today. If you're brand new to the channel, speaking of the UAP show, check this out. Look at that. Got a UAP shirt, man. I ordered you one, Riley. Yeah. And uh, that's from the great Wicked Art. You can get that on the, the, the T-shirt store. It's linked in the description. We're excited about it. We've got support the show, support the, uh, support the fight. Get a UAP show, a UAP shirt today. Uh, again, links in the description. All right, it's me and Riley. Let's do it. Big thing. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the big thing. UAP Tuesday. Mark Riley coming in hot. Here to discuss and uh, get it out there more, Christian. I mean, I think that's, that's been the goal, right? And I think that's what I we've, we've been... I just want... It's, it, really, it's about changing people's thinking, I think, for now. At least... Let, and that, and, well, I, 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 it's changing thinking to have them ask questions. Yeah, I guess those, like, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, change your thinking, but, like, offer up discussion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because to, to, I, you know, I, I, I'm on record. I have my own UAP yeah. experience, so I've seen with my own eyes. But after that video we saw in 2017, right? Right. 16? Yeah, right. 17, it was the Graves one, I think. The, the Tic Tac video. Mm -hmm. That was when everything starts coming out now, the yeah. hearings. And now here we are where I am very, very skeptical, but I am also such a believer in yeah. this. I'm skeptical when it comes to we go down a rabbit hole all the way to where there's portals in the sky taking away Malaysian uh, airways. <laughs> which we don't know. Which we don't um, know. But don't I'm know. willing to believe. Well, I've gotten, I've gotten people. It's funny because for everybody who writes, that's real. I've, I've seen a bunch of people going, that's, it's a hoax. It's not, it's not real. It's, it's been debunked. And I was like, send me where it's been debunked. I said, I always I, look. Yeah. I happen to think that it's not real. I happen yeah. to think that that one is just too big of a thing Yeah. that if it got leaked, people like um, James Fox and people like Ross Callhorn and people like that, if that was real, they would have gotten their hands on it and said, hey, yeah. this, is, uh, this is some damning evidence here. Yeah. And that ain't happening. So, no, and it's hard on Twitter when they say, this is an actual leak. And that's all they say. That's all they say. On, but like and then where? hashtag UFO Twitter. And you're like, oh, okay, where? Right. I will who, tell you who this, is though. this? Well, you know what that, that video made me do, though? Hmm. I went down the, I guess, rabbit hole or, or just watched that. And maybe this is what some people said, that you know, they wanted to bring more attention to the Malaysia case. Do you know anything sure. about that Malaysia case? No, not a lot. But so I know they it just It was 2014, I think, right? Yeah. 2014. And um, because, yeah, because Obama was in... Uh, it was in office. I'm pretty sure it's 2014. So, are you looking it up? Yeah. Yeah. So it's two. I'm pretty sure it's 2014. And 
so what happened was they, they took a, the, the flight itself, it takes off, it's got 200 and, I don't know, 20 yeah, plus. 2014. It was 2014. Yeah. It's got 220 plus on the flight, and it takes off, it's... It, no, sorry, what? wait a minute. I was shot down by a Russian control. No, 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 forces. no, no, no. That's no, no, no. a different. That's one. a different one. That happened. That happened. Jeez. That that one. Ha- but that no. It was both. That was both 2014. No, it was. Is it, it? Yep. Okay. Because that happened within like a month or two or three, two, three, like a month or two, within the same period. That oh that's what God. that's what happens inside. It's crazy. I'm just never flying around there. So, so what, what happens? So there, this plane is flying, and it normal flight standard, 220 plus on there, and families and. Just, you know, average thing, and there, there's no, there, there, they have audio of him, the pilot talking to, I think it's like the, the Vietnam at that point where they were crossing over, and you hear him go, okay, signing off, talk to you soon. It was a crossover. It mm-hmm. was in between the crossover of when they go to the next people, and and then it just disappeared. Yeah. And the question was, well, and the families obviously, were, well, where are they? Week, nothing. A year, nothing. And they're like, well, where is this thing? And people are like, and then the one that you just read, there's one that was shot down by the Russians. Like, well, yeah. that's probably what happened to the other one. Yeah, well, they found debris of that second one. Right. There was no debris of the first one. And then they then, this is the part that I thought was really messed up. There's one reporter on there, and he's like, yeah, and I just realized it was the pilot. It was the pilot. And he, he said, I came up with my whole theory of that it was the pilot. And he painted that the pilot was the one who basically shut off all the heard about communications. This, yeah did everything to turn the thing around, and then he just probably ran out of gas and crashed. Again, where? Right. Yeah. But then there was another woman who's like, if you look at this guy's background, pilot, why? Mm-hmm. Like, it made, it made no sense. She's like, I, if I was going to say it, if I was going to look into it, my reporting, I don't think it was him. Because, mm-hmm. and again, no debris, nothing. Now, was it UAPs? <laughs> uh, but, could have but, been a million things. Could have been a million things, Weather. but it's just crazy. Like, nothing in history. There's been nothing that's just disappeared. Like that's yeah. nuts off radar. Yeah. That, right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of strange. I mean, not just UAPs. Right. You know, it's like this past weekend they were trying to find Loch Ness. Finally, is that, is that you know true? what I mean? Yeah, they were putting, you know, using drones and sensors, and like everybody's getting out there trying to just finally find Nessie. You know, and that's. I think Nessie is a part of the culture when you are talking UAPs yeah. and when you're talking um, Bigfoot, Bigfoot, thank yeah. you, and, uh, you know, abominable snowman right. or anything, you know, they're all in that kind of that realm where it could exist. Right. You use science, you could use, you know, Sasquatch, you can, well, that's a missing link. It sure, be sure. One of our uncles that, you know, grew a tail and it <laughs> fell off and then it's <laughs> right, right. And now it's in the Washington woods. Uh, you know, so I, I feel like that's the Bermuda culture. Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle is another yeah, one. Yeah. That's you what know. some people said too. It's like, it just, what is it? And then it's like, yeah. oh, what happened to it? I mean, I, I'm still, I'm only like, there's three parts. I'm on the middle of the second part. In, and again, it's a fascinating thing because it's just, there's just no record of, of, like That's still, weird. they. Yeah. I mean, like when that when that whole thing, the Titanic thing, happened recently. They found yeah. they found. I mean, that was in the bottom of the ocean, and they found that thing. They found pieces of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This they they didn't find anything, and they tried to like plant something or say something that, that it was, and it's like no, it wasn't. That's I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's 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 pretty fascinating. And then the idea, you know, obviously they they kind of skim over it in the documentary where it's just like there's all these different theories, and they kind of add to the stigma. To be completely honest with you, where they're just like. There's a picture of like the the standard alien picture, like aliens took it, like, like and there's all these crazy theories where, uh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? It's just but but between that and and then I was watching a little bit more. I've been watching the because people. That's what I actually really have. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the comment section at all of the show, Somewhat, but yeah. I'm getting a lot of people like recommending yeah. other types of other shows or videos and things. And I got turned onto this uh, channel called the Y Files. Have you checked this out? Mm-mm. No. You would love this channel. Okay. This guy's. This guy's. The only. I, I don't know if. I, at first, I'm. I'm coming around to it, but it's. A, he does like this almost like um, Saturday morning, kids type vibe where okay. he's. But he's. I'm interested. The, the the subject matter itself, he approaches very seriously. Okay. But he has like this fish in the background that talks. <laughs> but it allows him to say things that he probably wouldn't say. Okay. Like normally. Kind of like, like American Dad, you know? The, yeah. The talking said, fish with the alien of all the, things, the alien got, roommate. Yeah, well, what this guy does, what I really, what I, what I like and dislike at the same time, but I think I like more than I dislike, 
he presents these cases with all the real facts, and he does it in a very respectful way. Okay. And then all the ones I've seen so far, nine out of ten times, he's kind of kind of debunked or said or debunked in his mind and said why these things probably are. He brings the kind of a more of a, a realistic form to it, right? To debunk it. He uses I mean, he just like, gets like this is probably what it is. Okay. Like okay. For example, like he, he covered he covered the um, the Zimbabwe case with mm -hmm. the kids, and he talked about certain things about. He just gave real facts and things I think that are that should definitely be mentioned. Where this is my point. This is like I, he, he's somebody that I feel like we're talking about those like skeptics. When skeptics are well informed, yeah. And, skept, and this guy isn't necessarily a skeptic. He just brings in like the hard facts. Yeah. When somebody has the hard facts and understands and is, and is well informed and can discuss and say, well, like this, MythBusters, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, but it's like exactly like if someone like I was talking to like Roka was on for the show. We're, we're airing our show on Friday that we did, and we talked about it afterwards. And he just brought up kind of grush things. Like, yeah, I heard from secondary nature, the secondary somebody that somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody saw something. I can't take that serious. <laughs> I was like, yeah, but do you know? Did you watch those other parts? Do you know about this case? Do you know about this? And he's like, well, but I just know who's running it, and and I'm like. See, but you're not informed on it, and the, and this guy said something. About, so the, so there's people, so many different roadblocks to it, to, to, to get this. there to get there. But there's this, so this the Zimbabwe case, which you're familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the so all these kids saw it, and then they de some they didn't all have the same story, right? They definitely some of them saw a red ship, some some saw a green ship, some saw this, and they talked about that. And then what he brought up that I thought was very interesting, this guy on the Y files, right? The guy that did the, the guy from Harvard that went in to interview these kids and mm -hmm. put, really put it on the map and like, wow. He, it was three or four months later, to which this guy's point was, that gave them enough time to kind of synchronize a story. Okay. okay. Yeah. And the other thing that he said was he like, he said before he showed up, the kids had never talked about like the telepathic thing that the aliens had with them about the environment and right. this. He's like, and this guy was an environmentalist. Hmm. And he was, and it's like, look, I'm not saying that he didn't. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. And so when he he brings up this this the, again this show this Wi-Fi thing, he, he brought up another thing that was really interesting. And I went through like a bunch of videos on his channel. Highly recommend it for people if they haven't watched it already. But oh, like, yeah, I he should did, go in. He did this thing about a guy who said that um, there's this kind of myth about the 1920s that this guy was in a coma for a year. And when he woke up, he woke up in the year 3000 something and brought back a great detail of everything about internet, aliens, things. This is 19, whatever it was. He wrote 20, what, right? 1920 something. 20s. But he didn't tell anybody about it until the day that he died. He gave it to, he gave it the book with all the thoughts to like Smart. a coworker, but never, but never gave it to anybody. Never talked God, about that's it. Cool. Him out. Oh man! So, but listen, though, I so, love stuff like this. I loved it, and, it, and it's but, a story but, for now. a story. So he started, yeah. to, and and so this guy on the thing broke it down and said everything what it was. And he said, he goes, now this is what you could believe. It was a fever dream. This, this, and this. He said, it really happened, or he said, what I believe, this guy never existed. Mm -hmm. And he broke down on how he said because there was this rumor that this happened and this happened, and he put it together, and you're like. He makes really good cases, Jesus, yeah. and then the other one that I watched, which I thought was fascinating, also was the was the parallel universe one. This one I think you've probably definitely heard. Of. Like we might have talked about this in Clyde Live. I can't remember which where where this was, but this guy shows up and he gives his passport, and he says, uh, and and he he's got it all stamped out and everything too. And then he, they say to him, "Well, wait a minute, what's this?" And it was like some country that they had never heard of, and he's like, "Well, well, where's that?" Mm -hmm. so that's my country and they're like what are you talking about it's not, it's not, it's, so they didn't know because there's so many countries like okay maybe that's a smaller country and they called over co-workers they didn't know so they brought this kind of back and said point it out and you point it down to something completely like it's like a country that I figure where it was a turkey or something sure. or whatever, whatever it was so they kept interviewing this guy and they didn't arrest him but they detained him because they thought you know, he was a spy they didn't know what he was and so they, put, they, they took it his passport they took everything they put it in like a safe and they put this guy at this hotel and they had two guys standing outside the hotel room no no here we go and then the next morning the He's guy gone. was gone yeah and then they opened the safe and the passport's gone so you bisected again. our world on accident it, that that's and so what he did this guy in the y files which i thought was great is he sets it up 
with all the scientists and all the things that this isn't like science fiction. This is stuff that they said is possible scientifically of reports of people being able to transfer consciousness and things of that nature. Like who knows if it's ever happened, but theoretically possible and all these things. Yeah. And, they, and they bring, they like Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these people like talking yeah. about how this stuff is. And so then and I'm going to tell you the craziest video I watched at the end was not any, even though this sounds nuts, this wasn't the craziest one. So then they're talking about this guy and then he's breaking down all these different things. And they say about this particular guy, they're like, again, what you could believe. And then there was a similar case of a guy who was an actual spy that did these things that used to almost like uh, Frank Abnegal or whatever from, uh, oh, yeah. from Catch Me, Catch Me, Me Can. You Can who made up these countries, made up these different things, and became like this urban legend, and that kind of spawned into this tale. So who knows? That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a little bit more like, ah, yeah, that's easily yeah. explained. And that's why I think this guy does so well on his channel, but the yeah. craziest one, the one that he was kind of on board with, okay. is the simulation theory. Oh, God. Do you know yeah, this one? That we're all in a simulation, kind of like Matrix? I, see, but here's the thing with that. As, that, to me, as of two days ago, if you would have said that to me, I would have said to you, I think it's more likely that we have interdimensional aliens flying around the joint and the one's going to join us for a beer in about 10 minutes than there is a simulation theory. Yeah. What's and then you see those videos of like the bird, it's just hovering there in the sky. TikTok, boo doo doo, you know. Yeah, it but it's less that about video that. For you. That's not what got me, though. No, I know. What got me is all of the scientists, again, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who were like, it's, I think it's Neil deGrasse Tyson that said, it's not a matter of it, if it's a 80%, 90% chance that it's not, and 10% chance it is. He goes, it's a 50 50. And because simulation. Of, that this is a simulation. It's okay. like because of mathematical code and everything, too, and the way that they see these I, things. Yeah, I buy that. When, when, when these guys start talking and, and breaking it down in science, and that's, again, I think you were right. alluding to that. Yes. Um, you know, that's, that's where it gets interesting to me because you're thinking about things I can't comprehend. Um, when it comes to math and, yeah. and all these different right. things, right? Yeah. Um, but I know and trust and believe in science more than anything. And so if people start talking like this and they say 50-50, it's like, okay. And then you can start kind of connecting things and, and it's, I don't know. That, that goes to me with the big, I, I, I obsess over, you know, what happens. After, same, same. And right? That's, and so that, that can be like, you go into, like, this is the you know, nice it's like the X-Men danger room, right? Yeah. You got to prepare. And so you're going into, after this, the simulation, you go into the real deal. It's Watch that one. Okay. Because that one to me, and again, for people, and That's first of all, crazy. thank you to all the people who, I will also say that Attack Peter has been telling me to watch Why, Why Fox Attack for Peter. a while. Yeah, he's been, he's been he's telling me, he's great. He was telling me to watch that for a while, but like, um, but then there were other, there are other people who kept sending me, and I think there's someone sent that one to me um, that, I, that I was just telling you about the simulation. Because when I saw that, I'm like, okay, that, well, this, now we're just talking about, again, the Matrix. We're just talking about science fiction. Hey, but like, if you want to go to, I, I mean, that's I, the thing. It's, it's, why not? I couldn't believe it. I do dude. not, I, I don't want to discredit anything yeah. and if, if it can be kind of rooted in hypothetical theories right. grounded in science. Um, I'm I'm all for that speculation. I couldn't believe how much science was behind this. Yeah, I thought it was completely like oh, like one of those things. Like yeah, like more so like well, parallel universes could exist and this that. Yeah. This they're talking about this thing like the clips that he was showing. Like no, if you look at like certain scientists broke down that there was like mathematical code yeah. that's broken down in the universe. And there's this one thing he breaks down. I'm not going to pretend that I'm smart enough to understand all of it. <laughs> there's like this things that like the way they shoot these lights into these this particular thing and the way that it. They had to cheat it because it looked like it was computer trying to analyze what was coming through it. It's again, it's this whole thing. But like, I've watched every video that I've watched of his so far has been very fa has been fascinating because I do like his approach. I do want to see how he approaches certain UAP stuff. And he didn't he didn't completely debunk the the Zimbabwe stuff. He mm -hmm. just he just offered a well. Think about it this way, which I think is, which is what we talked about, like when we we're talking about, like, with, when we mentioned DJ mm -hmm, last right. week. Like that's the kind of conversation I would love to have with people because I think, like, when you have the facts and you bring up something like that, and you go, "Well, wait a minute, know that this guy was an environmentalist," and this, and I go, "Okay, it's a good point," right? As opposed right, to right. like duh, green alien. Duh, duh, duh. See, that's a that's that's the big thing, and and not that I mean my 
God love my wife. That's she doesn't do it that way. She right. just does it like ah, you know, right. and just move on. And, and, and that's if, it, if I can't see it, it doesn't affect me. Right. And right. then there was there was something I saw on Twitter. Um, you know, and this is more of the UFO hashtag. You know, going down the rabbit hole thing. But it's like, yeah, there's these. You know, three branches of government, right? The secret yeah. government that that believe like there's one faction that believes they're demons because they're the evangelists and they're the yeah. Christians, right. Right? right? And then there are the other ones that believe it's uh, you know us or something. Right. And then there's the third faction that it's real and they've made contact, you know. Right. And then the tweet under that was like Steven Spielberg believes. It's us in the future, time oh, traveling back. Is that what he? Was? Yeah. Well, okay. apparently, according to UFO Twitter. So I want to see. So there's a new um, was Encounters that yeah. comes out on on Netflix. Yeah, the, uh, I, I'm perking up to that one. We're, so we're it's a new series coming out on yeah. Netflix with Amblin and and our buddy uh, Andrew Freed over at Boardwalk. And so we're gonna um, we're trying to get the director on. Amblin's the best. Yeah, we're trying yeah. to get we're trying to get the director on for the for the show to be able to talk to us yeah. about it, which would be great. And I know Spielberg has his hands in this um, a lot more sure. than maybe. He normal. Wants, he wants to let well, on. He, well, yeah, because he's well, he's a UFO guy. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's. I mean, he's been looking up to the sky longer than any he of had us. Heinrich on for in his freaking movie. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, he he based Close Encounters on a lot of real you know events, yeah. real events and, and sightings that were that were really grounded in in yeah. more reality than just. You know, I saw something, right. right? You know, so down to the the one of the cutscenes in the director's cut that I've mentioned many times, which is like the pilots. I saw something. I saw something. Go on record. Nope. Right. You know, because that's right. I mean, that's the majority that was of it. what a, a thematic through line in that in in Close Encounters well, so that we're dealing with here. Yeah. O'Hare. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk yeah. about O'Hare, and we'll talk about um, the, the stuff that's been going on. How it seems like they're getting blocked, and I want to talk about how. There are certain people that are still out there kind of fighting to fight. But does it seem to you that a lot of the people who are really loud have quieted down a little bit? Or do you still... the you skeptics, you mean? No. The ones that, like, the Burchettes and the... Oh, the yeah, like, yes. It uh, seems- uh, absolutely. Because I 100% believe that it's because of uh, the climate in America right now. Yeah, and they said, hey, stop that. we got to concentrate on other things right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's yeah. Um, there is a lot going on when it comes to I mean politics. You, you know politics yeah. Yeah. politics are, are are running right we need um, you to, we need you to fight our fight we don't need you to fight uh, trying to get aliens uh, out uh, there. they tried yeah. to sneak a question in uh, at the Republican um, debates and they all laughed at it oh really yeah yeah Chris Christie he had wanted nothing to do with that question what was the existence question? of UAPs and that there's you know colleagues of yours that are you know opening up yeah. this. And Chris Christie's face was just like, and people start laughing, and she's like, all right, moving on. That's finally what the Republican debate did on Fox that does cover it and does give it some legitimacy, in my opinion. But when you you then turn right around and, and try to do it on a public yeah. stage that that it, it, it was the same talking is going to do nothing about freaking it now. thing talk, yeah talk, i mean as so, much as much as us like look i i enjoy like i just ha- like having conversations like this too like yeah th- these are chill fun it's like having the conversations yeah. like whether it's the parallel universes the uaps the other stuff and like because of what we believe and what we want to know but i don't think uh, we've said it every time on this show the until there's something that you can't can't deny um, nothing's going to happen. And I hate to say it because it's just like, I, and as much as I want to believe like what James Fox was saying when it came out, he's like, over the next year, yeah. this thing's going to blow up. I, I, I don't know, man. I think you just said it, like how that... We're, we're going to have to get through this yeah. first, I think. I, and, and, and Unless, you know, Independence Day happens. <laughs> or, 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 or Close Day. Encounters, or, or, like or the, E.T., right. or whatever kind of movie world you live in, or or just something that that does catch the media's attention well the media will put if it's they were covering the the las vegas ufo one which i believe was really? debunked no i, that's I don't ken, know that's what ken said i don't know i, I, I still don't know i just I gotta look into that. it so yeah, I, I, ken I, I said that it was I, and i looked for where it was debunked and yeah. I, I said who's holding that his uncle uh, who, I, I, don't, I don't know i don't know I, th- I thought i saw that actually on twitter but did you i yeah i looked and i didn't say, I, um, I tried to search for it yeah, what was my point? But uh, it's it's just the idea that if we're having, it's it's hard to get people to to look away f- from the train wreck that is our country Politics, right now. Yeah, it, it's, uh, no. it's it's a, it's a 
circus. It's true. You got to have and a lot. It's, it's you, terrible, you need, and I hate it. No, you need a lot of um, you need a lot of energy to kind of keep up with it. So yeah, it, AG one. That's how you do it. Yeah. Uh, you get some, get yourself some AG one. That'll definitely give you the energy to keep up with this and more. And then you get hungry. Get yourself some Green Chef. I'm gonna tell you about both of them right now. You guys are very familiar with AG one, and I'm glad that I am. I love AG one. They've changed my life, man. They really have. Our next partner is AG1. It's the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it every day. I wake up in the morning. I shake up uh, a scoop in a bottle of water. And actually, I've been using this cup I got from the zoo. Don't ask me why. But I, I, that's what I've been doing normally. And I put it in this cup, and I shake it around. And it is. And I, I love my coffee. I'm not going to tell you that I don't love coffee. But I only take one cup of coffee now. I only need one cup because AG1 is I, my Sleep quality is better. My, uh, it just everything about them. I feel like my immune system is better now. It's like there's so much better. I just feel overall, I feel so much more healthy. My, I've been in a better mood since I've been taking AG1. I really have, and I love it. It's so good because I can't do the. It's hard for me to do the supplemental routine. It comes with a whole bunch of different products, and it, it's just I don't know. It's it's just easier for me to do it all with one shot. And since I've been drinking AG1, I've known just a, a lot of mental clarity. Uh, my, my digestion is easier. I'm focusing a lot better. So for me, I don't understand why people would want to take a bunch of different things where you can just take one scoop, put it in powder, shake it up once a day, boom. Because AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to complicate your routine. It's the best. I am so excited, and I'm so glad they're with us. They've been with us for so long, and you know, I had someone over the weekend ask me, "Hey, I want to support the show. I want to. I want to try AG One. You think I, I'll enjoy it?" I said, "Yes, you will enjoy it for sure." And one of the things I really like about it too is that it tastes good. You wouldn't. It's green. It tastes good. I'm telling you, and it smells good too. My wife the other day, she's like, "What smells like berries?" I was like, "AG One, man." So if you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. You have to go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. You'll thank me later. Green Chef. You guys know how much I love Green Chef. They are the number one meal kit for eating clean. You can feel your best during the busy season with delicious, nutritionist-approved recipes Featuring clean ingredients with no artificial colors, sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup, and limited added sugar and limited processed ingredients. You can choose from recipes featuring lean proteins like turkey, sockeye salmon, barramundi, tilapia, scallops, shrimp, the whole nine yards, guys. It's the best. You can eat clean the easy way with recipes that help manage your weight and support your wellness goals without skipping on flavor. You really will feel your best. I love Green Chef. I've been using them for a while now. I love their meats. I love turning things into rice bowls now, and I make uh, I make these healthy burritos out of them, and I'm grilling all the time, and I love Green Chef. I've been making a lot of the, um, the shrimp bowls, too. I like putting those on the grill. I like following their recipes a lot of times. I didn't know I could do half of this stuff, and they make it really easy. If you go to greenchef.com slash 60 things and use the code 60 things, you're going to get 60% off plus free shipping. Good deal here this month. Greenchef.com slash 60 things and use that code 60 things and you're going to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, baby. The number one meal kit for eating well. All right. Thanks again to our great sponsors, AG1 and Green Chef. So excited to have them both on board. And so if you guys didn't already know, and I've told you many times over, that if you're brand new to the channel, you're here for the UAP stuff, and you want to support the channel, and you want to keep us going and keep us doing the show, if you have the means to, please consider getting one of our great sponsors, something that you know fits, fits your needs. And, uh, and please do that. Use our links and get yourself one of those, whether it's uh, AG1 or, or Green Chef. The link is in the description, and I always pin the sponsors to the first uh, comment below green chef is good it's really I, good i want to i get i need to get the the food going yeah you know the the making the, the food because going to the store now is oh just you like can't a do nightmare. that yeah you got it and you got to want to have it all set up you got to do it use the code man <laughs> i'll do it yeah, use right. the code right. it's it, it's it's fan and right now it's 60 percent off oh okay yeah, yeah. yeah that's easy it's not gonna last that long so hurry up all right i'll yeah. do it all right um all right here we go so before we get into the the, the Chicago one, mm -hmm. I do want to bring up this this cat. Um, I like this guy, this astrophysicist. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I saw this. Yeah, I like this guy. So 
What Avi Loeb says is the UFOs should be the subject of mainstream inquiry. Preach, brother. Science must bring clarity. That's all we're saying. What's that? That's all we're saying. That's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. The, the Harvard scientist on his search for alien technology, academic jealousy, and why we must fund space exploration. Abraham Loeb, known as Avi, is a professor at astrophysics at Harvard University. He has done the unthinkable. He has repeatedly been willing to contemplate the existence of non-human technology and how it may explain certain perplexing astronomical observations that mainstream science struggles with. Loeb, who is 61, is the author of Interstellar, The Search for Extraterrestrial Life and Our Future Beyond Earth, and a follow-up to his New York Times bestseller, Extraterrestrial, The First Signs of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth. On the day we spoke, the U.S. government was preparing to hold a House of Representatives Oversight and Accountability Committee, hearing on UFOs with retired Air Force officer and former intelligence officer David Grush, who turned whistleblower in June, claiming the U.S. government had retrieved pieces of crashed alien spacecraft. They asked him when it comes to UFOs, why is it always a government cover-up? Why don't astronomers see UFOs? Aren't they people looking at the sky the most? And he said the government would be a natural first to recognize anything unusual in the sky or in crash sites because their job is to worry about national security and to monitor the nearby environment. Astronomers always train their telescopes on very distant, slow-moving objects. They are not looking for anything fast-moving or nearby. So it's possible that if anything unusual happened, the U.S. government would notice it first. Um, this, so they, this, this guy's got, this is a whole um, interview on The Guardian. But he's been out there, though, talking more about it and saying that that there just needs to be more scientists kind of going because he he kind of took a shot at at, um, at Neil deGrasse Neil Tyson, deGrasse, Austin, yeah, I'm sure, because he, he said yeah, he just he just kind of looks at the the skeptic kind of side of, side of view, but the data he said he what did he say he said something along the lines of if for someone who is a scientist and looks at the, and and goes on data he should be looking at the data yeah because he's not because he I just think, seems to want to debunk it immediately right. without kind of. Entertaining a more scientific discussion, perhaps, because right. I feel like the data is there. But that's why I was so, like, blown away when I heard him talking about like the uh, the simulation theory. You know, yeah, like, he, yeah, he was that's like, that's all bored with it. See, like, that's the, see that then gets me going. Right. What do you? Okay. Yeah. He's okay. like mathematically, it makes sense, and this, and I'm like, wow. I just, like, it's it's really getting to a point seriously where you could just kind of contemplate the universe. And yeah. just go, you know, how in the world could we be the only thing? Yeah, I'm telling and you, not just is... simulations and I, I mean UAPs, UFOs. Yeah. I mean everything. You know, everything outside of this. I mean, it's just, it's 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 unfathomable. I, I've <laughs> to, been to consider the the universe and, and everything therein. Yeah. I, I, so it just when you really just think about it that way, mm -hmm. and just open up your your mind. I th this is for me when you open up that way of thinking um then it could be like okay yeah even nessie i'm sorry it could be like a missing link in itself it could be like this is actually when when they pull out a fish from the bottom of the ocean and go look at this thing it's prehistoric right that could be something that nessie possibly is but i'm just saying uh, across all of this it it, it, it consider it. it it it's a lot it there's a lot, a lot to consider it there's it's all i know is this this is what I've realized after really diving into this from this show, looking at the stuff, the Malaysia stuff, looking at the the, the UAP stuff. Looking Something's at, fishy with that but, one. It's but, just but, weird. but either way, but any of this stuff, like the uh, recently I've been talking about a lot. I've been looking in like to manifestation, looking at the, those things, and looking at potential the dimension stuff, looking at the this this theory of uh, of simulation theory. This is what I have determined: is that there are somewhere. Clear cut answers that you I think would so? never know. <laughs> that is what. Yeah, there are there are clear cut answers out there, and there might be clear cut I, I answers out there. That I don't know. No if one clear knows. cut. No, no. I, I think, think there are. I think there are guides I'm and data, you, and there is a clear cut answer that someone just I think can't access. All, well, maybe, that's what I maybe, mean. maybe. Well, what I'm saying, but is, I, but maybe years from now. Well, that's what I mean. I'm just saying that you know, there is a clear cut answer. That maybe well, you don't okay. even have an, have an access, and no one has access to. Yeah. I'm just saying there is, like, I have gone farther and farther away, because I talked to Brett about this, and we have this video up on the channel from a while ago. So just like you said, like, what happens when you go? Yeah. I go farther and farther away from the just pitch black theory. I've been, I've been leaning away from it. I used to be, I used to be all about the pitch black theory. Yeah. I mean, you know, meaning just, that that's just, you go to sleep that's and it. that's the end of it. That's, yeah. Yeah, like a fly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and it and and that is scary and also kind of filled fills me at least with like, all right, make this count, you know, kind of sure thing. But also I go I can go into that anxiety, but with this stuff, that's why when you when you consider and you and you look at Shet and all these guys and Crush coming out and mm-hmm. saying this and, and going, wait a minute, I've seen this, I've seen this, I'm going on record, you know, your 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 goal in life, right, right is to protect yourself. Right. It's to protect yourself. It's it's instinctual. It's that's in that's in work, that's in life, that's in love, that's in relation, everything, right? So these people are going out there, putting their neck out there to say this weird ass stuff. Right. Okay. So it's going to that where I consider, okay, there's more out there. And so why wouldn't that mean there's more that we don't understand That's what I mean. after the lights go out? I'm telling you that, that so the lights go out. Okay. And then you have to just find your way and there's something else could be simulation. I like that more. That's what I mean. I just wish, I wish that I understood. I mean, like I'm fascinated by science. I'm fascinated by science. And like I've said it many times over, like quantum physics and all those things. I just wish that I understood. I wish I was smarter enough to really, really get it because like, or maybe I don't, you know what I mean? Maybe I don't want it because who knows? You might not. Yeah. Because I even, they even said there was one scientist, like really brilliant one. was like the, I forget. He was quoting someone and said, if you, if you truly understand quantum physics, then you don't understand quantum physics. <laughs> like, and yeah. so, but like when, like looking at all of that and it's just, there's just so much with time and space that I think as human beings, we just walk around going, oh, well, this is just what it is because if we just, this is what we know. Time it, and space. It is and it isn't. Right. It's like time right? doesn't work in this certain way that we think that it does and yeah. that, you know, consciousness and the way the universe works and how overall the energy that we have inside of us and how that projects and where that goes and and how it maneuvers around it's it's nuts i mean look there are a lot of people who are probably watching are just going no that's it you're done and it's it's what i see in front of me is real i just start to go more and more into that theory of there is no spoon i i yeah yeah i i i'm trying to pull this this book uh, from, from that I read many years ago, but it's um, Ralph Biscuit steals the world. Oh, uh, that's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Biscuits makes an appearance again. He has to. Um, no, but it, it, it's it's connected to our dreams, right? And and um, that we are connected in our dreams by I, I'm going to butcher this saying, uh, but like a silver line, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word, which is like Doctor Strange, sure, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you put, yeah. you know. Pushes you out of your, and yeah. you're connected to your body. You're and essentially that's kind, you're on the astral plane. Yeah, you know, um, which is based in that theory, mm-hmm. the astral plane that you're out there. And and when you think about dreams and dreaming, mm-hmm. you know, some weird stuff can can, can sure. pull out. That's I believe part of your subconscious and whatnot. But why isn't it? What like how and why? Okay, yeah, the deepness of the brain and the different firings and mm-hmm. on, and the cylinders, and you're only using this percent and this percent right. and. So it could be just your subconscious, but I, I I do believe that there perhaps could be something linked to the other side. And that's what I mean. So it's like this. I th- like that's what I, that's what I meant by when I s- said there are answers there. Sure. That I don't think will. I mean, there are. They're clear cut answers. Someone's got them. Like who whoever it, now whether or not. Yeah. This, I, I mean, how do like is it a, in a vault somewhere no, in the no, government no. like when next I say, to the ark? When I say someone, <laughs> someone, someone could be people flying around in ships. Someone could be Spielberg's. Theory. Someone could be God. Someone yeah, could oh, yeah. be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Be, I know what you mean. Someone could. Someone is what all I'm saying is not necessarily someone alive. I'm just saying. Someone, somewhere, someone has the answers. And whether we ever will get the answers, no, if I anyone know will exa- know the answers. I know exactly who it is. Who's that? The flying spaghetti monster. What's that? What's that? <laughs> You've ever ever heard the flying spaghetti monster? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's 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 it was something years ago. Like I was working at uh, production partners okay. at the time down the street from me at Warner Brothers at the time. Um, and it was like this joke of like, oh yeah, no, it's it's basically you know it could be anything. Okay. So it's a flying spaghetti, spaghetti monster, monster. Oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, a, no. you know, a, a being of ultimate power right. that uh, looks down upon the judges, the grants the wishes, um, you know, ushers you to the other side. It's just a flying spaghetti flying. monster. <laughs> Perfect. Old, old. I like spaghetti. Um, all right. Before we move on, I also want to tell you guys real quick. 
about two of our other sponsors. We've got Marine Layer and BetterHelp, both fantastic. Really excited to be working with them, and I'll tell you both about them right now. Support for today's episode comes from Marine Layer. You guys know I love T-shirts. I wear them all the time. They sent me the softest T-shirt ever, like ever. Imagine like the softest thing that you ever touched. Kittens, small puppies, or freshly fallen snow. Now take that by a thousand. I'm telling you, these things are so soft. I couldn't believe it. People tell you that stuff all the time, but this is this is fact. Whether you're going out on a date, you're at the office, you're keeping a casual, you're shooting videos, Marine Layer has the best shirts for every occasion. Marine Layer clothes are that perfect mix of laid back style that also looks and feels premium. So I needed a new gear man and they sent me this website and I was on there for ever going through stuff and picking out great stuff. They just have so much to choose from and so many different things. Like comfortable, comfortable, uh, whatever your style is. I love it. It's so soft. It doesn't matter how many times you wash it. Soft, soft, soft. It's incredible. I love them. And I wasn't, I'm wasn't. i always in the look for new gear and I found it. Marine Layer, man. Now, for a limited time, get 15% off with the code BIGTHING15 for 15% off your entire order at marinelayer.com. Save your closet one shirt at a time. Green Chef. You guys know how much I love Green Chef. They are the number one meal kit for eating clean. You can feel your best during the busy season with delicious, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring clean ingredients with no artificial colors, sweeteners, high fructose corn syrup, and limited added sugar and limited processed ingredients. You can choose from recipes featuring lean proteins like turkey, sockeye salmon, barramundi, tilapia, scallops, shrimp, the whole nine yards, guys. It's the best. You can eat clean the easy way with recipes that help manage your weight and support your wellness goals without skipping on flavor. You really will feel your best. I love Green Chef. I've been using them for a while now. I love their meats. I love turning things into rice bowls now, and I make uh, I make these healthy burritos out of them, and I'm grilling all the time, and I love Green Chef. I've been making a lot of the um, the shrimp bowls, too. I like putting those on the grill. I like following their recipes a lot of times. I didn't know I could do half of this stuff, and they make it really easy. If you go to greenchef.com slash 60 things and use the code 60 things, you're going to get 60% off plus free shipping. Good deal here this month. Greenchef.com slash 60 things and use that code 60 things and you're going to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, baby. The number one meal kit for eating well. I needed some new digs, man. I'm glad that I... um. I'm, I'm glad that I got myself in touch with Marine Layer. Love them. Really good, comfortable, soft, soft shirts. And better help. I can't speak. High. I, I, I absolutely love them. They're, they're so, so good. And they've done so many good things for people that I love. So please check out um, both better help and Marine Layer. Uh, all right, Riley, let's get into this thing and we'll call it a day. All right. Um, let's talk about this O'Hare incident. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. So tell me, tell me what you you because you went down the rabbit hole in this yeah. one. I know you. It, it was it was first we first saw it. First, I learned about it was mm-hmm. during that the five part documentary UFOs investigating the unknown, a yeah. National Geographic one, which has kind of started my journey on this whole thing. Um, and reignited mine. I would say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it so basically, um, this particular case it was the one that i always bring up like how more people don't know about it because it's so fascinating like so after you kind of dove into it what what stood out i mean it's it goes into the part of what we're talking about the thematic through line of the show i always feel like is the belief you know in what you just saw you know and and then what it takes to put it out there right when you say i saw this because what was seen was shared by a number of people on the ground was shared by some pilots and you know down to the you know when this thing took off it was a gray metallic kind of shape and when this thing took off it literally punched a hole in the in in the uh clouds right and so they were they were met everybody who was reporting this was met with just extreme scrutiny and um you know people are like no it was the weather and and that's what they ultimately reported it as it was a weather thing because it was xyz and somebody came on some meteorologist was like oh the punch in the cloud is a well-known weather phenomenon and this this is that and so you know ultimately these pilots which is it mirrors exactly what i feel happened in close encounters where they're like hey okay Right. You know, that's that's like what happens. Yeah, but that whole punch thing. 
was. But let's talk about yeah. what what they saw yeah. because when you have so many people, you know, sharing the same experience, how many people? I know that they. Um, a few witnesses. I had it here. Sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'll give you. Well, you look for that. Basically, the breakdown of it is. The Chicago O'Hare UFO sighting occurred on November 7, 2006, around 4.15 p.m. 12 United Air... There we go. United Air employees... Yeah, and 12. ...and a few 12. witnesses outside O'Hare International few. Airport. So we're talking 15 people. Yeah, they reported a sudden UFO sighting, and the Federal Aviation, Aviation Administration refused to investigate the matter because this unidentified flying object was not seen on radar, instead calling it a weather phenomenon. But what they didn't say, because this was a... Because Keen was doing the investigation on this as well, and she said that when they when they did some further up on it for this hole punch, yeah, they said it's a hole punch, and then they asked some weather experts and like, well, it could be a hole punch if the weather was below like that's minus it. degree or whatever it was. It was like fifty six degrees that day, so yeah. that was that 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 was thrown out the window. Um, but that's right when the when Keen came a calling, yeah, Ooh, say that three times fast. I know. But when they when they started doing this. This um, story on it, a lot of people were retracting what came out, I, I believe. Something like that. So at approximately 6, 1615 CST on November 7th, federal authorities at Chicago O'Hare International Airport received a report that a group of 12 airport, airport employees were witnessing a metallic saucer-shaped craft hovering over gate C-17. The object was spotted by a ramp employee who was pushing back United Airlines Flight 446, which was departing Chicago for Charlotte, North Carolina. The employee apprised Flight 446 crew of the above aircraft. The object was also witnessed by pilots, airline management, and mechanics. No air traffic controllers saw the object, and it did not show up on radar. So the Freedom of Information Act released a transcript of air traffic controllers' phone reporting yep. to the FAA, which is what you hear on that uh, mm -hmm. on that documentary. Witnesses described the object as completely silent, 6 to 24 feet in diameter and gray, dark gray in color. Several independent witnesses outside of the airport also saw the object. One described a disc-shaped craft hovering over the airport, stating that it was obviously not clouds. According to this witness, the object shot through the clouds at high velocity, leaving a clear blue hole in the cloud layer. The hole reportedly seemed to close itself shortly afterward. According to the Chicago Tribune's John Hilkovich, the disc was visible for approximately five minutes, and it was seen by close to a dozen United Airlines employees, ranging from pilots to supervisors who heard chatter on the radio and raced to view it. The reaction from the Federal Aviation Administration and United Airlines, both of both the US, United Airlines and Federal Aviation Administration initially denied that they had any information on the sightings until the newspaper, this is what you were talking about, right? Yep. Chicago Tribune, which was investigating the report, filed a Freedom of Information Act request. The FAA then ordered an internal review of air traffic communication tapes to comply with the Tribune, uh, which subsequently uncovered a call by the United Supervisor to an FAA manager in the airport tower concerning the sighting. The FAA stance concludes that the sighting was caused by a weather phenomenon and the agency would therefore not be investigating the incident. According to astronomer Mark Hammergren, the weather conditions on the day were right for a hole punch cloud and an unusual weather phenomenon, even though the, the, the other one said there wasn't. UFO investigators have argued that the refusal to look into the incident contradicts the agency's mandate to investigate possible security breaches at airports, such as in this case, an object witnessed by numerous airport employees and reported by at least one of them hovering in plain sight. The NARCAP report says that they published a 155-page report on the sighting and has called for a government inquiry and improved energy, uh, energy sensing technologies. So this is a... The, what is that? The Chicago O'Hare Airport UFO story was picked up by various major mainstream media groups such as CNN, CBS, MSNBC, Fox News, Chicago Tribune, and NPR. There you go. So uh, on February 11, 2009, the History Channel aired an episode of the television show UFO Hunters with the titles Aliens in the Airport, in which they reviewed the incident. So, I mean, this is always the story, though. Yeah. When they cover it, it's always like, you know, at the end of the news. Yeah. And they're like, a fun story outside yeah. of Temecula. Right. Three people saw a disc in the sky and it disappeared. Cuts to them is like, it was over there and we saw it. And then you see this grainy footage. And then, and that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you next time, Joan. Let, it's let's just cut to little of, Timmy hitting a home run with a, with a hot dog. Yeah. But, yeah. And, but they, they kind of always have this like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, like, yeah. like you said at the RNC. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's just it's just something. It's works. it's you know it's like, you know, they're going to close it out the next day yeah. with you know a girl's lemonade stand. Right. So, so I, I understand, and and this one is is so interesting though because I just keep going to the idea of like twelve people, right? Yeah. Aviation, like in various degrees of of working in the airport, which is always a, th- a theme here. You know, it's an airport or it's a nuclear facility or it's something. Right. You know. Um, uh, so uh, I just don't know how you read that and, and don't go, okay, the thing that stands out to me are 12 people, the, the kind of the differences in the media's reaction, the differences in, in how they, they go, okay, we're going to retract that now and, yeah. and investigate because the news is now coming in here, that that's not enough. I know data to just kind of go investigation, but it's like, and it's, like it's like, they're always, sh- it's like, they're always shut down. Every investigation is always shut down. And whether it's, you know, people saying, someone telling them to shut it down, not to answer any questions. And there's the X-Files, you know, that's where it's right. like, you but know, somebody like, comes in and goes, we're shutting this down right now and we get everybody right. over here. And then, but it seems to be always the reports of this. Like when you look at that Japanese flight that happened in 85, right? Right. right. Like that's, that, a, that, that's another good example. That's what happened where, where the one, where the one guy who's talked about it a lot, is just like, yeah, they didn't ask for this piece of information. So I kept it. Yeah. And, then the other thing that I saw was that they did like this hearing um, with a lot of prominent, a lot of prominent figures. I think it was like 2004 or something like that. Like it was, a, or I can't remember because I think Keane was involved and I think that James Fox was involved. I think all these people were involved. And like I was reading one of the military guys that was like, he was giving this whole thing about everything that he was saying, the same stuff that Grush did, but he had seen it and yeah. more of those things. And he's like, and he talked about, I don't know if this guy's still alive, but he was like, if they ever have a hearing and they need me to talk, I'm talking. I don't know what happened. But I, yeah. what I do know is this, and this I'm bringing up that Zimbabwe case, and this is something that they asked the guy on the Y-Files to cover, and I hope that he does, that Harvard um, professor, the guy that did the, the um, interviews at the Zimbabwe case, right, the environmental guy, he was really, his career kind of took a hit, um, and they, the people were outspoken. They did an investigation on him, where he didn't even, he hadn't done anything, but they investigated him because he was, they didn't know if he was mentally, whatever, was, and he, sure. he wasn't. They kept him on there, he's fine. But he was really starting, he was starting to go on Larry King, he was going on all these things and really talking about it a lot. The same, like, he, he was killed by a drunk driver, and which people think was a little nefarious. The okay. craziest part, I forget the guy's name, let's, let's say, and, and I'm not doing the guy justice, let's say his name is, is Ben Smith. Okay. That same day, like five or six other Ben Smiths died in the same area. It's kind of like Sarah Connor. <laughs> Something like that. That that was from the Y Files guy. That wasn't like a. It's, and, and again, oh, I, I think Jesus. I got the numbers kind of messed sure, up, sure. and I definitely got the name messed up. But but you get the scenario. Yeah, yeah. That's... So and this is what we were talking about with like when that lady from the Hill was like, but who, who that that's their stuff that has happened that has been passed off mm-hmm. as. Accidental deaths, and not to say that they're all nefarious, but like people who are talking about it at d- in depth, yeah, and then wind up. There's tons of them that that's happened. That's tons that, of ne- them. that nefarious stuff is, I believe, yeah. But it, it but it's also then it, it it almost it well it does it contradicts everything that the government does right it's by by saying like we don't really care kind of, of they, 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 care. they give an air of care we don't care right right so open up these investigations please what do you have what's over there yeah. is it collecting dust or is it nefarious in that you just you know bumped off homie over here because of right. X Y Z well Roxy Roxy said it right if it's not if it was really if they didn't care. Yeah. After 70, 80 years, wouldn't you just say, okay, listen, this is so stupid. Right. Like, this is so See, stupid. that's where I get, This yeah. is what drives me nuts. It's like, if, if I knew, then the bottom, I said, like, they don't have shit. There's no just aliens. There's no UFOs. And there's none of this stuff. These people are making this stuff up. I'll tell that's you what. A, that's a lot of people. Right. I'll tell you, right. I'm, I, here's what we're going to do. To put this to bed once and for all. We're going to, and, and, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do now, because you guys keep pushing this thing, and now we're going to show you. We're going to put the money into this thing, and it's going to be on your shoulders to show you. We're going to make this whole thing. Where do you want to look? Okay, let's go look. Boom. You say there, nothing there. Okay, now how about this? You th- oh, Okay, so you said this and this. Okay, Bob Lazar, what are you saying? You say this, 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 and this. Well, let's investigate that. I'll sh- we'll show you. Like people who work there. F- fake, 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 fake. 
that never happened. Instead of this going, well, I don't know, I don't know yeah, what you're talking that's, about. You know. It's just weird. Like for everybody who says, well, I can't see it. Well, we also don't see the people who are saying that it doesn't exist going, let's, let's show you the concrete proof. Well, because I, I, th I don't think the demand is there yet by, right. because we the have the, 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 the... Right, right. So if there were a lot of people, you know, protesting... You know, it's louder now, but not loud enough. It's not loud enough. Right. And again, there's got to be more. And I think, honestly, I mean, I know we've talked about the Independence Day scenario and, and, la and not, not just, you know, they're going to blow up New York, but like a, a shared event where it cuts to all major news stations. Right. There's something like nine. hovering, oh, right, District 9, perfect. There's something hovering over the Eiffel Tower. We don't know what it is, right. check it out. And everybody's like, okay, right. you know, that, that would be one way. But with, with all of this, I think the advancing of technology that is going just at the speed of light now, it seems, will get us there sooner rather than later, I feel. Because we're going to then, there, there might be more to uh, a cell phone in 20 years, right. right? We don't even know what that, what it could be. Right. To where something's flying by you and instead you're just like, right. you know, your eyes you are, you, you have it, right? So then it plays it back and more yeah. people, I don't know, you I know, know. I'm going down know, that no, rabbit hole. No, I know hole, what you're but, saying though. It's like you just, but technology should, should be, be catching catch up, up sooner or later. Yeah. There's got, there has to be more evidence. The further we get, I mean, we're getting sooner or later, we're going to land on Mars. You know, sooner right. or later, we're going to get even further. Yeah. You know, right. so I, I think that this is a natural progression. Yeah. Well, granted, right. being stifled. Right. Well, there's look, there's reports all of the time still. Like even oh, on yeah. August 25th, strange lights in the sky reported by pilots around the eastern Colorado. Right. There's reports. I go to Colorado. Yep. Yeah, there's a ton of them out there's there. There's tons of them. There's I mean, they're always, always reported. Michigan, so, where I saw them. I mean, yeah, you I'm, know. I'm telling you, it's gonna be, it's gonna be this thing, as we say every week on this show, that there just has to be one where, if you're, if you're watching this right now and you're a skeptic, and you're like, I don't think so. It's got to be for that person right now who's writing the comic, going, "You guys talking about this?" Blah blah blah. To go, sorry, I said that. Like, it's got to be something for like the most skeptic of skeptics. To go, yeah. to go, oops, sorry about that. Like, that's contact. That's the kind of a event. close encounter yeah. of the first kind. Third, <laughs> first well, contact was isn't isn't third? Isn't no, was, I think it's like meeting. Third uh, is meeting. Uh, like, uh, th third is contact. Yeah. yeah, I think first is like being abducted or whatever. Yeah. It really, may be. I thought first was just seeing. Just, oh, was it was it go backwards? Third, I fourth so. kind. I think oh, third is fourth or fifth kind. Yeah, whatever. Fifth, maybe. Fifth, I think fifth is Con, uh, yeah. where they're having Starbucks together and <laughs> right, and talking fifth. about their yeah, screenplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a each, um, each level goes it goes up. I mean, and that's I mean, do you believe in abduction? Do you believe in in people? Uh, I, I have a very I close friend that one hundred percent believes he's been abducted numerous times okay. to where to where uh, they believe that they've been implanted. And it's like, and I even said to him, it's like, it's almost like you're a shark and they tagged you and they're watching you. And my he's like, 100% like, he believes my that. My question is, why him? I mean, if you saw him, you might understand. <laughs> Kai, Kai Blackwood, he's, okay. he's the coolest guy, but he's, you know, he has the, the, the vibe of the, the black spiky hair, the tattoos yeah. everywhere, the, the mascara, the, the painted nails, you know, a band, the hard metal, mm -hmm. talented as, as ever director, um, you know, but believes that that happened. Okay. And he was with me when we saw the, the UFO. And it's something he just goes, yep, he sees them all the time. So it's interesting. It's like, it's and like, I don't to, know what to believe well, of to that and you, make of it. But right. I, I, I talked to him like I, yeah. I believe I've been with him when I've seen it. You believe him? I, I, belie I, mean, I believe as much as I can. You believe that he believes it? I believe that he believes it, right? One hundred percent. See, that's, yeah. that's and I believe I, that it it's in the stories that he has told me are crazy. Right. Are, so this is this is ugh. a question that I think a lot of skeptics would yeah. ask on that, but I'm not asking it for a skeptic reason. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Is he a big drug guy? No, no, okay. no, not at all. Um, so, like my 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 answer to your question, where do I believe in it? I know that I am not in a position to where I say I I won't believe it. Sure, and sure, I, sure, sure. But I because. It's hard for me to believe, but it's like, but it's also not one that I'm gonna. I, I don't like. I said I don't know what I don't know what any answers are. It's the same yeah. reason that when somebody says to me that they're so sure 
that like they're that they're God. They they know, and I'm like, I love that you've got that kind of faith. I love that. Right. But don't tell anybody else that their belief is wrong, because if you like Buddha, if you I mean if you believe right. in Buddha, right. if you right. believe whatever whoever you believe in, well, I've got proof. How do you know you have belief? I've got proof. You don't. You don't have a proof because you, yeah, you'd be, there's no you'd, proof for him. He doesn't have. He admits it. That's what I mean. You know. Like my, well, my my point is that's why I don't. It's like I. You can't tell anybody what it, what they believe or whatever or what's right, what's wrong. It's like that's why I have this. I have an issue with with when religions are so like we're the only religion in the yeah, like You don't. I, you don't mm, have the authority to do that. No. I do because of my faith. Yeah, but what, but what's the difference between their faith? Yeah, there's uh, you know. Where is your proof? That's, what, and, I, that's and, what I mean. You know, some people could put it in books. Uh, the abduction case, Whitley Schreiber, um, Christopher Walken in um, Communion, yeah. that movie, that's a very famous abduction theory, okay. uh, abduction story that is one of the scariest moments. Have you seen that movie? What's it called? It's Communion? No. Christopher Walken is going absolutely nuts in this one scene because there's an alien down the hall coming back to get him because he's been is abducted. It like, is it actually an it's actual? It's a true movie? story but, based but, on but, his. But are they treating it as an actual? Ad- yeah. Ad- oh, okay. it's it's a completely straightforward okay. uh, take on the material. They're coming to get me. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 uh, he's there. <laughs> no. It, it's no. It, it's it's kind of like that, but but it's scary. He's yeah. he's literally screaming his head off. And one of the scary shots I've ever seen in a movie, this this gray alien, you know, the big eyes yeah. and the, you know, is looking around the corner at him. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Right. That's, that's well, it's just... still one of the scariest moments ever, like signs. Was that, oh, so that, it's, that shot? It's, that is in that discussion that nobody brings up because signs is a bigger hit. Yeah. And that that shot in signs is scary as f yeah when i believe the i believe the communion one is even worse Worse than that it's scary it's interesting um yeah maybe it hasn't aged well i don't know well we did it again riley i think that this is ultimately what the show is going to be to be honest with you i love it i love conversations like that i think that's what it is it's going to be like because right now as we if there's more news that kind of comes up there's always articles there's always sightings there's all those things and we'll talk about that but i do want to talk about certain things like whether it is cases like the o'hare ones other ideas of different universes, things like that. And it's like, we're not, this is not the show where we're ever going to say, as I, as I said, a definitive matter of fact, this is what it is. Cause we don't know shit. Um, yeah. but what I will say is that be open-minded in your conversations. And it's like, not even if you don't believe like, don't shit on people for what, for what they believe in, but have conversations. And that's why, again, I give a lot of props to this guy on the Y files because he, he approaches it in a way that is just very, it's, it's, it's intelligent. He has the information, and he's got good facts. And I think that everybody should approach conversations that way. So even if you're commenting here today on things you believe, you don't believe, tell me why you don't believe him. Tell me the, the, the or, or why you do believe him, and give some give some facts, give some video evidence, give some uh, you know some back and forth, and and always willing to have a good conversation over here. So, Mark Riley, where can the people find you? Uh, go find me on all the socials at Riley Around. Uh, make sure. We are almost at 100,000, guys. We just hit 90,000, so we're trying to get to 100 by the end of the year. I think we can do it. We need you guys to help us out, so hit that button if you're brand new to the channel. Get us to 100,000. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. For Mark Riley, I'm me. You're you. See you next time. <laughs>